I told myself that I would be done with DIY projects for a while. Well, it's been a while, and now the time has come to enjoy whatever summer we have left here in Colorado and get as many projects done before winter comes. The first project is a small form factor speaker, tiny actually. I used a pair of M3 carbons from Stereo Integrity. Can these little three and a half inch drivers provide the proper sound to fill a room? Let's find out. Before we get into the M3s, which I am more than excited to talk about with all of you, I encourage you after the show to visit my description below and explore my audio-inspired online clothing shop, my new music on Bandcamp, and familiarize yourself with my other content across all the social media platforms. Something for everyone in there. I'm Mike, and I'm your Hi-Fi journalist. So how did this project come about? Well. My good buddy Nick from Stereo Integrity sent over a pair of M3 carbons from his shop in North Carolina. Suppose you aren't familiar with Stereo Integrity and plan on actively doing DIY audio or car audio projects. In that case, you need his speakers, <laughs> literally. So his link will be in the description below. The M3 carbons are a small little three and a half inch mid-range driver with a carbon fiber cone and dust cap. Nick meticulously designed this speaker to be able to act as a mid-range and tweeter without compromising sound quality. With a rated frequency of 125 hertz to 20 kilohertz and a proper subwoofer, you can get a full range experience from these tiny little speakers. I wanted to do a fun DIY project, so I thought, why not put these speakers to good use? So I needed to source an enclosure since I didn't think to build one myself, my bad. So I found this one on Parts Express. It arrived in a few days and after opening it, I was a little let down. Not only is it just ho-hum MDF, but the front baffle was like half an inch deep, if that. So I had some extra wood from a different project and decided to use that instead just for the front baffles. I called my good friend Mike Galusha to get his opinion and ask for his help because I wanted the speakers to sit nice and flush and I didn't have, at, and at the time, did not know how to use a router. So I will leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description below for those who haven't subscribed to him already. Before I sauntered over to Mike's place, I put together the enclosure. Aside from the wonky front baffle, the box came with no instructions, just a couple of marketing materials from Parts Express. I suppose they probably have the build instructions online somewhere, but realistically, when, are, when you're in the zone and in the heat of the moment, you just want to get it done. So I figured out which panel went where, used tight bond to wood glue, and clamped it together for the evening. When I got to them in the morning, I discovered they were good to go. Just a little light sanding and away I went over to Mike's house. So I brought some nice high quality binding posts I had ordered and the enclosure. The first thing we did was cut the new wooden baffles to size. Many measurements were taken to ensure the speaker would fit flush with the front baffle. We routed out the recessed lip and then used the same router to cut the hole for the speaker to fit through.
After that, Mike rounded off the edges of the front baffle using a different machine and special bit. These softer edges are proven to reduce diffraction from the speaker. It turned out quite nice, much more attractive than just stiff square edges. Once we finished, it was time to drill two identical holes in each enclosure for the binding posts. The holes themselves needed to be very accurate since the binding post needed to be shoved in there, well, basically hammered in there and needed to stay in there. We then soldered an adapter to the speaker's wires. The M3 carbons come pre-soldered and terminated, so we attached this adapter that would allow me to plug the speakers in without having any issues because once I glued on that front baffle, my hand would not have been able to fit inside of the, you know, the enclosure to connect the wires. So once we finished the soldering, the hard part was done. Well, so I thought. Before I left, Mike had a suggestion and a gift. His gifts frequently come with a lesson, which I do appreciate. He's like my Mr. Miyagi of audio. I think it's great. I was originally going to paint the sides and back of the enclosure black and then just stain the front baffle. However, he had a long strip of wood veneer that he wasn't using that matched the front baffle almost exactly. He said it would look better if I used it and just stained the front and sides and spray painted the back black. I told him, look, look, man, <laughs> I have never done veneer on anything and I don't know how comfortable I was starting today. He gave me a quick tutorial and provided his vote of confidence. I said the hell with it. If I were to screw up an enclosure, it would be like this $20 throwaway ho-hum one from Parts Express. So thanks again, Mike, for all your help and all that you do. So as you can see, this project went from a simple, inexpensive MDF enclosure to this hardwood front baffle and wood veneer potential work of art. Well, as you can see, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> that is if I didn't mess anything up. So when I got home, I decided to do the veneer first before anything else. I cut the veneer using a single-sided razor blade and left about half an inch on each side for precision cuts. I cut each panel down to size and carefully cut the edges. There was a little overhang uh, on some of the edges, uh, okay, because I just sanded it off, any excess or rough edges that appeared from you know, my shaky hand with a razor blade. Uh, it was then time to spray paint the back which I should have done before the veneer. So next time I know, I taped off the veneer and added some extra paper towels for any chances of overspray. I sprayed the back of the enclosure black and let it dry, dried pretty quickly. Once it was safe to touch, I hammered in the binding posts using a piece of wood and a hammer and then glued the front baffle onto the enclosure and clamped it up for a few hours until the glue was nice and dry. I immediately noticed a couple of things after removing the clamps. The baffle wasn't cut wide and tall enough to hide the lip of the wood veneer since the wood veneer wasn't planned before the cuts were made. And I also had some nasty gaps on the edges uh, from a botched sand job I did earlier. So wood putty to the rescue. I bought some putty and filled the small crevices after the front baffle finished drying. I let the wood putty harden overnight. The next day I sanded off the excess wood putty, which was a lot of excess wood putty because I was pretty liberal with it, and just focused on the stain. I used, as you can see, a reddish mahogany style stain and poly blend. I do like the color and finish this stuff provides, so I used a brush to apply the stain and then a terry cloth pad to wipe it down. I did three coats to make sure I had a nice rich color. The front baffle came out a, like slightly darker, but overall the wood veneer stained really well and looks pretty uniform aside from a few little... Once the stain was dry, I drilled the pilot holes for the screws. I connected the M3 to the adapter and stuffed it with polyfill. I used a drill to secure the screws into the driver and it sat perfectly flush and centered with the enclosure. It was time to listen to what I had just spent a few days creating. Well, my first impressions were quite amazing. I used my Yamaha AS501 to power the speakers. I tweaked the tone controls just a tad to get it right where I wanted it and wow, crazy. I didn't know three and a half inch speakers in a tiny enclosure could have such an expansive front sound stage. They are a bit directional, so towing them in just right on axis you know, yielded the best results for me. The bass wasn't there. 
which I didn't anticipate since they were rated at 125 hertz before falling off. However, I am curious how they measure. Here's what I found with the REW sweep. The bass did start to careen below 128 hertz, so that was accurate almost to the exact number from the manufacturer's specs. There was a little spike around 3.2 kilohertz and another spike at about 13 kilohertz. The red line is with the Yamaha with the settings as flat as possible. The green line is tuned how I like to listen to music. I brought the mid-range down just a little bit, brightened up the treble and gave it a little bit more bass. Now with these speakers, it should go without saying that they need a subwoofer to provide a full range experience. However, in this case, I don't feel like they needed a tweeter. You would think they would have, but they didn't. I felt the N3 carbons performed exceptionally well from 125 hertz to upwards of 14 to 15 kilohertz where, you know, we lose audibility in our ears unless you're a child or a dog. So, okay, so sound wise, the soundstage was better than some higher end speakers I have heard. The imaging was spot on. I literally closed my eyes and the singer was right in front of me literally right in front of me. Just incredible. I didn't think I was going to enjoy them this much. I mean, I, I knew I was going to like them, but it just shows what properly engineered speakers can do with a ho-hum enclosure from Parts Express. I now imagine what a custom cut enclosure designed around these speakers would probably sound like. Perhaps a future project? Who knows? Nick? I can tell you one thing, speakers from Stereo Integrity are quality and provide unexpected results. I paired it with my Perlison Audio D12S subwoofer and it was a very nice marriage between the two. It provided an incredibly full range sound. I was actually joking around with Nick uh, and told him that doing a line array with these drivers would actually be quite interesting. But overall, I was pleased and I feel like my first DIY speaker build was a freaking success. If you have any questions about this, comment below, or if you want a list of the materials I used, I will link it in the description. Thank you all for joining me today. I enjoyed our conversation and hope you can join me for more. If you had fun, I would love for you to roundhouse kick the like button like a Van Dam would. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified whenever a new video emerges. Thanks again, friends, and I will be seeing you very soon, sooner than you think.